This is Will Davis with the Monroe County Reporter. Some of the top stories you'll find in this week's newspaper, State Champions. That's what the Mary Persons Competition Cheerleading Squad is now called after a big win on Tuesday night at the Macon Coliseum. The Lady Bulldogs winning their first ever state title by outgunning the Pierce County cheerleading team, which has won a number of state titles in a row. They have dethroned the Bears from Pierce County. The Mary Persons Bulldogs win their first state title since 2004 when the boys track team won it. Find out more details in this week and this week, next week's Monroe County Reporter. Mary Persons High School has told a volunteer baseball announcer that he's not welcome back due to some comments he made on social media about the school system. Chris Sewell has been the PA announcer for the baseball team for the last three years. He was told on Friday he is not welcome back in his volunteer job. Sewell said he's not totally surprised because he did like to have fun. For instance, he would play three blind mice when the umpires would make a bad call over the public address system. But Sewell said he was surprised when he was given the reason. He said the baseball coach relayed that the principal, Jim Finch, said that his uh, commentary on social media this summer, critical of Superintendent Mike Hickman for his protest against this newspaper, was part of the reason for his dismissal. Find out more details in this week's Reporter. A Monroe County young man is traveling the country with a free speech bus in which he lives to raise awareness of the value of freedom. Browning Sandusky, a Forsyth native, is traveling from campuses to campus and high school to high school, college to college to spread the word. And as he interacts with other young people, they can come sign his free speech bus, which is where he lives. Browning Sandusky says he loves the First Amendment, he loves the freedoms on which America was founded, and he wants other people to love them too. Find out more details in this week's Reporter. I'm Seth Berkabaugh, and this is the Monroe County Reporter Incident of the Week. An irate man threatened to burn down Shoney's this week after he was upset about his corn beef hash and strawberry pie. The manager at Shoney's told Officer Cody Maples that the man had been calling all day, complaining that his meal was a mess. He also said that he was going to send some friends down from Missouri to shut the restaurant down. First Juliet resident to get county water under the new $20 million extension of county water lines is turned on their faucet. The Monroe County Commissioner celebrated on Tuesday the first home to get county water. Commissioners are extending water lines all towards the plant share area after residents in the area complained that their well water may be contaminated. There's some controversy and question about whether that contamination is naturally occurring or from coal ash seeped into the groundwater. Nevertheless, county commissioners have uh, running water lines all to homes in the area. Now the first one has county water. See details in this week's Reporter. Monroe County deputies have nabbed two suspects wanted for shooting others just on Friday and Saturday over the weekend. On Friday, Monroe County deputies uh, stopped a man wanted for shooting a bystander with a shotgun in Jones County. The man was arrested without incident and taken back to the Jones County Jail where he faces aggravated assault charges. Then on Saturday, Monroe County deputies caught a man wanted for shooting, uh, killing another man in Fulton County. He was stopped on a traffic stop and now is awaiting uh, being sent back to Fulton County where he'll face murder charges. Find out more details in this week's Reporter. 
The Monroe County Sheriff's Office says a 26-year-old man charged with sodomizing his half-sister may have had some mental issues. His name is Justin King. He was charged last week with sodomy for indecent activities with his 10-year-old half-sister. Find more information in this week's Monroe County Reporter. This is Will Davis with The Reporter here with our Newsmaker of the Week. John Ambrose, County Commissioner, District 3. John, thanks for joining us. I appreciate you inviting me. Uh, big news in your district this week. Uh, Monroe County uh, had a ceremony at the first home in Monroe County to be served by the big $20 million Juliet Water Project. What does that mean to you, John? What does it mean to Monroe County? It means a great deal to me. I was one of the things that I ran on as County Commissioner, trying to get water to the Juliet area. And the way we got it is not the way I wanted to get it, but we got the water there so it serves a purpose because they need the water bad in that area due to the problems they're having with the wells. With, uh, with the first home served, uh, the question amongst your constituents now is, okay, when are the rest of us going to get water service? So what Quick. can you tell them? Quickly, the, the phases we're working with, the amount of contractors we've got, this will be one of the largest water projects put in in such a short time. I'm really proud of the way our county manager has handled this. Well, it's uh, it's exciting to see. It's uh, a lot of water uh, lines going out. It, you've you've been dealing. People may not realize how much you've been having to deal with questions about where the pipes are supposed to be and whether they're in people's yards. Uh, it's pretty much been a full time job for you, huh? It has. It has. But it's a job I don't mind on that. Uh, another issue. Uh, you were in last week's newspaper uh, that we reported on your proposal for term limits. Why did you do as a you are now the dean of county commissioners, the longest serving commissioner. Why did you propose and, and get past term limits? Because I look at myself and I look at other parts of the government. The first term, you're basically flopping in the water trying to learn what to do, and get the things, you try to work on what you ran on, what you promised the people you were going to work on. And it generally takes the latter part of the first term, the first part of the second term to accomplish this. And then once you get all these things accomplished that you, you were striving to do, you can get blinders on, you get complacent to other, other things that need to be done in the county. And I'm proud to say that, you know, since 2015, we've had a lot of change in the commissioners, got a new board up there. And one of the things I wanted when I came on was to stop the micromanaging of the, county, of the commissioners and get a county manager. And since we've got that, got a good finance department, everything's great. And now, if you, three terms, you get complacent. You don't see things you ought to be seeing and what you need to work on. And if the president has got a two-year term and the governor on a two-year term, I think they, they need to have term limits for all of them. We've got senators been up there 45 years, and it just makes me mad because they go in there without a pot to pee in. They come out filthy rich. <laughs> I mean, it, it, and I've seen things at the local level, and I just think how that progresses up the stages up in the government and I think a three-year term limit is plenty for anybody to get some new ideas in there and new blood. Your proposal would cap those to commissioners to three terms and a chairman to three terms. Um, it passed three to two and now goes to the state legislators, but they are indicating they may not support it. Was that disappointing to you? It was. It was. Cause what do you think they're, What do you think's going on there? Why won't they carry well, that through the legislature? Anytime you've got five commissioners and... If we all agree on everything, they'll look at it. But on, on something like this, you're going to have a couple of commissioners that are totally against term limits because they get they probably get knocked out. We've had commissioners here 30 and 35 years, and it's just something that they don't want to look at, or hopefully they'll look at it, but I doubt if we'll have any luck with it unless we come up with a four and one vote or a five and over. Right, vote. Just, just being divided. Well, John, there's so much more we could talk about, a lot going on with county government, and you have always been one of the most transparent and open and outspoken commissioners, so it's always been helpful to uh, to us to tell our residents what the commissioners are thinking and doing. Yeah. Well, I'm not a politician. A lot of times I, I don't have the job that I have to worry about saying something ruining my job so i tell it like it is I, I want to do the best for the county citizens that we got and if it takes bumping heads and get people upset that's what i do but i'm proud of what i've done in my terms it's kind of liberating to just say what you think isn't it yep all right john ambrose our newsmaker of the week thanks for joining us <laughs> thank you 
This is Will Davis with the Monroe County Reporter, joined by the founder of this newspaper, 1972, the great Don Daniel, on the outside looking in. Your favorite part of the newscast, where we talk about not just what happened in the past week, but what we think about it. You had some breaking news, Will, and it should have been on the front page, but you put it way back on the back page. Forsyth orders a bucket truck. <laughs> hey, small town news, you're, no story is too small. I agree with you 100%, but now it looks like the city of Forsyth is getting into the spending spree that the county is in the spending spree. Yeah, they may have inspired them. We had the story. <laughs> hey, repeat that. Inspired. The county must have inspired the city. <laughs> To spend money is what you're saying. That's right. It's uh, All right. It, it's a growing trend. We had the story last week about how the Monroe County commissioners are buying a $200,000 grapple truck and firing the company that handled the trash pickup because, uh, well, they didn't like their performance. And we had an interesting letter to the editor this week. They said, uh, Gregor Jennings, a local reader in Forsyth, he said, hey, we're going from private industry handling problems to the government doing it and, that's and he what thinks the government it was, wants. and he thinks it's a bad idea you know the government wants the government the government wants us people citizens to depend on them it's that's it that's just not right by the way what reason I'm dressed up so tight today it's cold outside <laughs> can't wait that's not totally true <laughs> uh, well it's, it's good enough for the, for the viewers and the listeners if I, I I can never mind. We, we can we can fill them in on some broadcasting secrets of the uh, of the video world, but we won't go there. Uh, Don, your column this week, you talked about the headline was "Term Limits Dead." Don, our online poll on Facebook showed huge support among our readers for term limits. Well, but tell that, them why. Tell our listeners why term limits aren't going anywhere. Because first of all, our legislators are chicken and won't present it. And the other reason is although the commissioners approved asking the legislators for term limits, our three legislators have done what? No, 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 we're not going to touch it. Basically. No, they're not even going to touch it. They don't want to do But see, it. I think you and I are on the same page when it comes to, I think, all public officials, and I'll say it directly into the camera, all public officials, elected officials, should be on a tight, ro tight rope called time out after two terms. One thing that has no term limits is your local newspaper. Don's been doing it since 1972, and they're not going to make him leave office because guess what? He's not elected, nor am I. We're just here to report on what's happening and entertain and inform our yeah. readers and viewers, and we thank you for can, joining can, us. Can, can I... Can I Close on yeah, one you got a closing thing. thought. Yes. Here comes your profound thought of the day. MP Barr's baseball announcer over his Facebook opinions. That's all I'm going to say about it because you need to read it. And then next week, Don will tell you what he thinks about it. So you'll have to tune in again here on the outside looking in on the porch.